Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors coming to you with Life Talk Topics. This is part of my Life Rebound and Recovery series. Life Talk Topics are usually helpful for anyone who has been in a setback and is on their way to overcoming a setback. The topic will help you to gauge where you are in your understanding, as well as help you to plan your way out of setback, which involves uh, you understanding your own contribution and the contribution of others. So take some time to listen to this Life Talk topic. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I will respond. In addition, I usually leave some sort of link in the description box. Uh, also, subscribe to the channel as well as hit, hit the notification button if you are interested in further topics. Um, thank you very much for visiting my channel and I hope you uh, are able to gain some insight from this Life Talk topic. All right, so this is mainly about pain and how we have developed a relationship with pain. So you can get off center easily. You want to express your pain. That that is one of the reasons why that uh, it is almost like you want to be offended so that that you want someone to provoke you so that you can then express your pain through a yell, through a shout, through a cry, through throwing something, right? That is the way you express. Now, you have to remember also kids express that way. And so if you are expressing your pain in those types of ways, that means you are still stuck in childhood somewhere. That someone in your childhood refused to address your pain or to hear your pain talk through your mouth. That's why you'll see like on shows like um, My my 600 Pound Life, the child, the, the adult as a child was molested and the mother, I mean, uh, the child went to tell the mother and the mother wouldn't listen, wouldn't hear of it, called the child a lie. So the child was expressing a particular pain that wasn't, wasn't validated, wasn't adhered to, wasn't accounted for. So then the person later goes on and begins to feel that pain through food, through sex, through alcohol, through drugs, right? And so that is their expression of the pain. It is hard for them, or they think it is hard for them to just call the pain what it is and journal through the pain. It is much easier to pick up the food, pick up the drink, pick up the drugs, pick up the sex in order to sort of like resolve that, uh, um, to resolve that pain. And that is their way that they are expressing their pain. You can take the dart, so you want to grab at your pain. So you think about a, a, a pool hall, right? And people are, who are at the dart board, they tend to throw darts to try to get into the center. And they may uh, throw the first dart and it hits outside the center and, and then a, a few more darts after that. But last, the last uh, one or two darts, they actually hit the center and everybody yells and everything is all right. Well, people kind of treat you the same way. They will throw a dart like maybe something that offends you or they think might offend you. You need to change your shoes or something like that, right? If you're not really moved by it, you don't express any pain about what they said and you actually change your shoes, you agree with them that you need to change your shoes, they know that that dart wasn't the dart that was going to, you know, take you down. But they haven't stopped though. They still want to come at you from a different angle. So it could be the clothes you wear or the uh, the hair you wear. I mean, uh, the hair, uh, how you do your hair. So if they start messing with you with your clothes, right, you kind of move a little bit, you know, um, it, it, it is almost like they can hear your heart racing or something like you twitch your head a little bit and that kind of bothers you. And they say, you know, they say to themselves that they're getting close. 
But when they say that you are a failure or or you um, you can't keep a man or you can't keep a woman or something like that, or you drink too much, I don't know what it is, and you blow up, they know that that is the dart that, that, that can take you down. And they will repeatedly come back at you throwing those darts. And it's always a way to kind of lead up to the one that, that truly provokes you to get you to blow up. And so instead of addressing that situation, you stay in the relationship. And it's, and, and it's almost like you want them to do that because you have gotten into the rip, into the rhythm and the habit of it. And so then you begin to grab at your pain, hold it close uh, to you. You know, how many times have you seen people in movies go behind somewhere, uh, hold on to something, hold on to a pillow and cry? And at what point are you going to say, I'm tired of holding this pillow holding this pain and it's time to resolve it, right? And so you are the type of person who can take the darts. They see that you can take the darts, so they're just going to continue to offend you. You go off somewhere and you cry. And I did that when I was a child because I was bullied a lot when I was a child and I didn't have the language to stand up for myself until much later in life. You can tap into childhood issues, so you want to address childhood pain. So, so it's almost like you want to get offended because if you can throw up in your mother's face that you that she wasn't there for you, then you feel like in that moment you can be sued. Just you know somewhere in your mind she's still not going to address that childhood pain. But you you are now creating a rhythm where when she says something, you throw something back up in her face about the child. You were never there for me. I was trying to tell you all this time that he was hurting me. Uh, I wanted this. I wanted that or whatever. And so you is you want to get offended in order for you to address a particular childhood pain. Now, it's going to be in vain. It is absolutely going to be in vain. But for you, if you can feel like you can you can get offended to offend, then that will sort of soothe you in your um, your goal to address childhood pain. You need understanding, so you want people to understand your pain. So you will let someone offend you just so you can talk about it. You know, you want somebody to say, "Are you doing all right? Is everything okay?" You know, you want somebody to understand you. And people will say that. I just need somebody to understand me, understand my plight. I got some things going on with me and I can't get anybody to understand me. And it's funny how that happens when people want to, they've been dating for a while and they now want to get married. And during the dating stages, they never really talked about pain. They were dating, they were having sex, they were going places, trips or whatever. But suddenly when they now want to get married, okay, somehow people have more trouble during the, the, uh, the engagement process leading to the marriage than they did in the previous courting and dating processes, right? And so now I just want you to understand my pain. You don't listen to me. Listen to me, right? All of a sudden, now they want to address that when they had all of that time to do it. You need validation. So I talk about this a lot. You want people to to, to validate your pain, um, your pain. You want people to say, girl, I hear you. I know what you're going through. I went through the exact same thing. You are not wrong. But in, in many cases, if not 100% of cases, we have a contribution. Uh, um, um, you still, even if um, a person um, was abusing you or cheating on you, you still chose to stay with the person. You don't deserve to be cheated on and, and, and abused and hit. Uh, but once that person hit you, and you decided to stay, they basically looked at it as agreement. If they hit you and you decided to leave, then of course that is 
you know, disagreement. So we still have that a, a contribution that we make to a particular, uh, um, um, you know, relationship. And you don't want to always have someone to validate you because you will get so accustomed to someone validating you and you not validating yourself. You need sympathy, so you want people to sympathize with your pain. That goes hand in hand with, you know, validation. But sympathy is like trying to gather all of your girls, your sister circle, all in the house, and you put on a pot of coffee or tea, and you make some finger sandwiches, and you all come together and talk about how your man mistreated you. That's sympathy. You want, you want people to hold your hand. You want people to hug you. You want someone that you can cry on their shoulder. You want the drama aspect of, of you know, getting offended and, and having someone to sympathize with your pain. You do your crying. And I'm not trying to be offensive to say that it is all show. But if you are doing this, like, often, not after just the one situation, but every time you turn around, your man is cheating it and you're calling your sister circle. Okay, that is a habit for me. And people don't have time to continue to express sympathy for you if you are not going to change. Because if you know the person is cheating on you, why are you staying? Why do you continue to let the person abuse you? And what happens is there's someone who's going to be in that sister circle who's going to ask that question and then you're going to get offended and you're going to cry and you're going to say uh why don't you you know sympathize with me why are you being so mean to me or whatever i just need your help right now i need your understanding okay but how long are we going to do this are we going to do this to to your your 30s your 40s your 50s because he can cheat for a long time if he wants to or she can cheat for a long time so you want to be careful about um um needing too much sympathy you need the habit you want the habit of being in pain you know i don't like pain i don't like pain i cannot stand a headache i have to go get me some a leave because i cannot stand it i don't like hitting my foot up against the door I don't like hitting my arm up against something. I have to go resolve that pain. But you have some people, they get up in pain, they walk through the house in pain, they go to sleep in pain, and they do it all over again, you know? And and a lot of times you can be in pain, but pain tells you that I remember something about that movie G.I. Jane with Demi Moore. Pain tells you that you are not dead yet. So that means that pain can be resolved because the only resolution to pain would be to die. And if you are still alive and in pain, that means you are not seeking resolution. You're not seeking healing. So I don't know how, I don't know what your pain is. Uh, people who... Uh, have been hit by a car or something like that uh, and they are in pain they give them pain medicine and then they also send them to rehab and physical therapy because they know that you got to get up and walk about you got to get up and work the legs work the arms work your mind as you are working the body you need the chaos so you want the chaos of pain uh, you like the fact of arguing with your man or you like the fact of arguing with your woman. I've heard many people say that I think that uh, he gets me upset just so we can have sex, right? That <clears throat> angry sex is the, the, the best sex. Well, how long is that going to last? It's not something that can last, you know, forever. Are you going to always have to create a situation where you are angry with each other in order for you to be soothed in that area? You, you don't know how to settle or resolve issues without sex. You still have to live together. 
you still have to move about and navigate your life. So chaos can't be the only environment that you thrive in. You need longevity, so you want long-lasting pain. The longer you are in the pain, the longer you can bring your sister circle around you, the longer you can uh, uh, need the pills, need the drugs, need the alcohol, because you don't want to let go of it. Longevity is essentially holding on to the crutch, whatever the crutch is. You want the option to hold on to that crutch for however for however long you want to and you don't want anybody to tell you that it's that that it is time for you to let it go you don't want anyone to set a timetable a schedule but somewhere in your development you're going to have to set a timetable a schedule because you cannot be in pain forever you cannot look to the longevity because looking to the longevity of pain is looking to the vision of it that in 20 30 40 years you are saying i'm going to be in pain and that's something that you need to challenge as an argument uh that's why i don't always agree with depression being like a long-term issue that people you know deal with um so you're saying to me at 60 70 80 90 years old that you're going to embrace you know, depression, th that you want to be depressed the rest of your life. If you look at it like that, uh, then you can sort of challenge um, some of the arguments you have for it. You need weakness, so you want the victimizing of pain. Some people like being the victim because it gives them an audience. It gives them uh, people who say, um, 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 you know, they like to be the victim of something, right? Uh, it's, it's, you know, for some people, it's more proactive to be the victim than the overcomer. Because if you're the overcomer of something, uh, you feel like people won't really be there for you because you feel like they, they would think you're done. You're not in pain anymore. So I don't have to come over every day like this, right? And so if you continue to, you know, sort of victimize yourself, you will have a long-term help. Uh, you know, that longevity we just talked about. So uh, you need the weakness. Uh, weakness. You want the victimizing of pain. You need offense. You want offending pain. You want somebody to offend you just so you can, uh, you know, get up and fight and jump on somebody. You got people who leave the house to fight. They leave the house. They are ready for someone to say something dumb, stupid, hit their foot, uh, um, do anything that would would prompt them to get up and fight. You know, they want to take their hands, take their fists, and fight. Okay, so some people they want it because it, it is it. They need the offense because it, it is it is the only way that they can navigate their world, navigate their life. They don't know how to be in peace. Peace is for the birds, right? So they want you to offend. They want you to say something. They want you to say, what, what, what? You want to fight right now? Shoes, I'll take the shoes. I'll put you in your place right now. What, what, what? They want to provoke. They want you to do at least one thing so they can do something in response. So now that we have learned about how we, you know, get offended and how it reveals our weaknesses, um, I have a writing task, as I always do. How long do you spend talking about your pain? Journal the different times in your life that people have ignored you or ignored your pain. How did you resolve the issue? So if you have not resolved the issue, write that as a sentence. I have not resolved the issue of people um, uh, causing me pain. Now work from there. That maybe it is time for me to begin resolving that issue. Okay. 
All right, so hopefully you were able to gain insight from this video discussion. Please like, subscribe, and visit. So uh, please like the video, hit, hit the notification bell for more discussions. I am re-uploading all of my audios, uh, so I, I needed to make some changes to them. Uh, you can visit my, web, my website for more content at reginawhyfavors.com. If you want to send me an email, you can send an email reginawhyfavors at yahoo.com. Please also purchase the book. It's going to come out in spring 2021. That's so why I had to make changes um, to my book to update it. And I also updated, updated the title. So the original title was Bait, Hook, and Switch, Confessions of a Rebound Girl. And I have updated the title to Toxic Encounters why people pursue rebound relationships. So right now I'm still basically editing it and I wanna make it available in spring 2021. So thank you very much for visiting my channel and I am Regina Y Favors, have a great day.